Welcome to this Codon Quick Tip tutorial. In this video, I'm going to go over the voxel sculpting tools in uh, Codon. This is early access version 050. So there will be bugs as explained in the disclaimer. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or go on to the Steam forums and I will try to answer you as fast as I can. Now, the voxel tools are what comes up right away after you click Start a new sculpt. We put them right in the beginning is because this is the, this is the toolkit that we recommend that you start off with. Now, you can load uh, other tools and other objects from other software. Um, and just start straight in the sculpting mode if you want. But uh, building with voxels is very cool and a lot of fun. So that's why I thought I would cover that first. This is kind of the first thing that you'll do. So now that I'm in here, I can rotate my gizmo by clicking on the trigger on my left hand, and I can sculpt by clicking on the trigger on my right hand. I can press the menu button, which is the top button on the right controller, to open up a menu on my left hand. Now, we did this uh, because we have something that's called an alternative brush sculpting mode. So let me just create my brush a little bit bigger here. I'm going to go down here to symmetry. I'm going to turn on 2D and Y axis. That means that it's going to be symmetrical along the Y axis uh, in two dimensions. So uh, I'll try to uh, sculpt a little bit here, as you can see. Here, the Y axis is here and it's symmetrical on that line, as expected. Now, sometimes you'll see a little holes there. You see a little hole that appeared. Uh, that's just the mesh that's not updated, so just going over it a little bit with the brush should work. Should fix that area though, should I say. See, here's a hole right here, so if I just fix it up a little bit, problem solved. We'll try to fix those little bugs in the future. Now, as you can see there, I removed some material, and this is the whole purpose that I was talking about earlier for the alternate brush thing. And if I press the button on top of the left controller, my brush turns red. And that is so that I can do the opposite of what my brush is already doing. Now this will make more sense when we get into the regular sculpting mode of what we mean by opposite. Because the tool is here, it says erase. And uh, that's basically what it does. It just inverts what the blob tool is doing. It's removing in the shape of the blob. You see, I'm trying to sculpt some things. And I can remove some. And I can add some. And it makes for a very quick workflow that you don't have to go into the menu. You can just press that Alt button to remove. And it's really the main thing you do when you're sculpting. You're adding and you're removing. So we thought it would be important to have a, a hotkey just for that. Now, you would think maybe you should have the hotkey on this one. We thought about that. It's not the worst idea ever. Um, except we feel like it's better to use your offhand to do like alterations. Uh, clicking two buttons at the same time, especially with the uh, controller being a bit long, you're going to have to touch over the touchpad and touch the button on top and squeeze the trigger on the back. It's something that can be a bit clunky. So we put it on the left hand instead, and we put the menu on the right hand, which you open by pressing the top button on the right controller. So after I've sculpted a little bit, I realize for some reason that I want some squares. Now the square brush is not in its best state at the moment. It's, it's the way it was since the beginning. We haven't really updated it, but... Um, it can be fun. You can do some fun things. You can make some like Minecraft style sculptures, uh, locking things in. Um, but in the future, we're thinking of having it uh, 
much more free, so you can orient it in which way ever, whichever way you want instead of it being locked into the voxel grid. And it works the same way as the uh, blob brush in that you can add and remove just by pressing the alternate button on the left hand. And the line tool works much like the blob tool, only when you click, nothing comes until you release. And then you kind of fill in this line between the place you clicked and the place you released. And in the future here as well, we want to add a uh, basically a, a way of seeing what you will do before you do so, if that's how I could explain it. We will add uh, like a, a visualizer, sort of, uh, to, so you can visualize what your stroke is going to look like before you make it. And uh, that will be easier to predict the outcome uh, of, what you're, of what you're doing with your sculpture. And uh, it works the same way as the, as the blob tool. You can add, and if you hold down the Alt button, you can remove. Uh, just as you'd expect. I'll go back to the blob here. Now the erase does the same as the opposite of the uh, alt button. We really only have it there in case, you know, people get confused about this whole alt button system, which is understandable, but uh, its complexity has benefits in that when you get used to it, the sculpting method becomes very much more quick and easy and uh, it feels more fluid that way. Okay. Now underneath here, I don't know if you can see what I'm, maybe I'm too close and I should have this far away. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to judge uh, when I'm sculpting because of VR and all that. And we're going to think in the future, we're going to improve our, our desktop camera so that we can more easily make videos like this. Uh, but it's what I'm saying that's important, not really what I'm what I'm doing. Uh, so you just need to listen to what I'm at least trying to say, and hopefully that will come across easily. Now, undoing is this button uh, on the side here. And in voxel mode, for the moment, undoing is very unstable, and I would not recommend doing it. It's been like that for a while. We We kind of had a little attempt at fixing it, but... We sort of ran out of time, and people were really, really asking for an update. So we felt like we kind of had to oblige, release the update, and just fix it on the go. So I wouldn't recommend undoing. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So try to be careful with undoing, is what I'm trying to say. Um... Yes, it says a note here, for example, when you when you increase your brush size a lot, it can be a bit slow. Now, it depends on your computer, but uh, it's definitely true. Since we are recording what, what we like to call real voxels, is that we are, every single voxel is stored. So voxels on the inside of this are, are all calculated in memory, and that's why it, it, it's a bit slower than other... Uh, sculpting tools that use voxels. Now this is something we're going to reconsider in the future and to have maybe only a surface voxel mode, in which case you can't do some really little cool things that I'm going to show you uh, later on now. But we feel like, like it might be worth the sacrifice in order for, to increase our performance. And as you see down here, we have our different uh, Symmetries, the cube symmetry is quite funny, as you can see. It uh, makes shapes in a kind of like a cubular pattern. We have the eight ring, um, which is a like circular or radial symmetry, I guess. So everything I do here is going to be radially repeated across all these eight points. Now, as, as you can see, it's a bit slow, 
when I have the biggest brush on plus eight radius, and that's because it's eight times the performance that it requires to make all those points at the same time. Same as with 16 and 32 ring, like if I go to 32 ring, um, I should really reduce my, my brush size by quite a bit, or else it'll be problematic. But as you can see, it's very smooth with 32 points. You can almost make like a cake thingy. There. Very, very cool. Um, the same is with 16, it's just with less points. And these uh, change the axis in which you, sim uh, in which you have the symmetry on. So. Right now is in the y-axis, which is this line here, which means the same thing will happen on this side and this side. And this will be circular around that point. Or if we do the x-axis, it'll be this side and you'll have your symmetry go here. So that's what that thing does. And there's the undo and redo. Now you can clear your sculpture. Uh, which uh, I'm not sure I want to do. I think I want to just do it just to show. Uh, but first I'm going to show this part here. This is a metal part um, where you can make your material like a metal. And here you can adjust the shininess, so you can have like... Oh, <laughs> still had the 32 ring on. Turn off the symmetry for this. Yeah, but like you can make like a very rough, uh, like a anodized aluminum type of material. Or you can make it a bit smoother, more like a polished iron kind of material. Or you can make it really smooth like a, like a polished chrome material. Now, the reflection is a bit odd here. Uh, it's because of the environment that we're in. Uh, but if you open up the Mars environment, you're going to have a really nice reflection uh, because of the real-time reflection that is there. So I, I'd recommend you play or play around a little bit with that, with the different materials and the slider and stuff. So I'm going to clear this little sculpture that I made. That's what the clear button does. It just removes your stuff. Now it's not undoable, so be careful. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make a little blob here now. Just to have something to bring in uh, into the next kind of video. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, uh, rough sculpting with voxels is just the easiest way to start off your sculpture. Like I said, you can bring in uh, meshes from other software packages and other other tools but you're really missing out on the pleasure of just creating your own little thing in uh, in VR, which is the whole point of this, to build in VR, right? And just trying it out. Making some little things here. Like a little alien type dude. As you might have noticed from some of the promotional footage and things that I post on the forum is that I am very fond of monsters. Monsters and creatures, they very interest me a lot. <laughs> For some reason. Especially in Codon, it's very nice to make monsters and creatures there. We don't really have the well, you can. You can make something quite detailed, but it's hard to be very precise with your detailing and make like a very, very precise human being or something like that. When you when you make a monster, you kind of suspend your disbelief a little bit more and it's, uh, a, bit, it's a bit easier to get something cool looking uh, with monsters. Yeah? So let's say that this is my rough sculpt. Um, I'd recommend you spend more time. Spend as much time as you feel you need to have a uh, a good rough sculpt. The better 
the more, like the more time you spend here, the better it's going to be for you when you go over into surface mode. Yeah, so we can just hint at some eyes there. Or something like that. Alright, so I got my dude. And at this point, I'll say I'm ready, I'm done. I'm ready to go over to surface. And at that point, I just click convert to surface. And then it turns my model into a uh, polygon-based model. And... If I open my menu here, and uh, I click, as you can see here, hold menu button to show system menu. And th it's basically the same button as the invert tool. The same button I press to invert my tool is the same button I press to kind of invert my menu, is how I would say it. And we can click on the wireframe view, and we can see, uh, the wireframe is created, it's okay, it has some poles and stuff, but... Uh, it's nice to inspect your model if, if something weird is happening and going on. You can uh, inspect your wireframe of your model. In fact, if you want to send us an issue or something, showing us the wireframe in your picture or whatever you're sending us will help a lot because we'll more easily understand what's going on with the mesh underneath. I'm going to turn on no shadows because I don't like the shadows that much. And I'm going to go into here on the alternate menu that I'm pressing, and I'm going to subdivide. When you saw this number down here, it says uh, 111, well, 119,000 polygons. It doubles every time you press the subdivide button. So it tries to split every triangle into two smaller triangles, basically. Um, I'm going to turn on the mirror tool, which is technically, it's the same as symmetry. And I'm going to use a smooth brush to smooth it out a little bit. Now, this is, uh, this video is supposed to only be for the uh, voxel tools. So I'm just going to show you the, oh, there was a little bit of a lag there. I'm just going to show you the smooth brush or how I would treat my model after I'm done with the voxeling, because it kind of has something to do with the voxeling, in that you get a little bit of a jumbled, a little bit of a jumbled uh, mesh once you're done with the voxeling, so it's okay to just take it in and just take, it, take the smooth, smooth brush for a spin, pun intended. And I often also go to the paint tool, and I... Um, I uh, usually pick a color that I like. I usually like a like a like like a muddy clay color, and I and I uh, usually fill the object with something like that. And yeah, and then we're ready for for surface sculpting. So uh, I'll say thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. Contact us on the forums, uh, especially the Steam forums is where I'll probably answer you the fastest. There, you can go on the Reddit threads, but uh, yeah, I'll answer you there as well, but it might take a little bit longer. I'm, I'm pretty quick on, on the Steam forum. So yeah, I hope you enjoy sculpting with Codon.